I'm Jason Griffith. I uh, voiced, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> uh, Sonic the Hedgehog from 2003 to 2010. I, my very first video game I ever worked on was Shadow the Hedgehog. And um, that was uh, such a magical experience. They gave us the script and it was the size of the Manhattan phone book uh, because there's so many cutscenes, so many endings, so many variations in that game. And I loved every minute and I was terrified every minute because I thought they were going to fire me at any point. Um, <laughs> Because I was so young, and, and Sonic was the very first thing I'd, the very first big thing I'd done, and I thought there's, there's, uh, it just seems like they made a mistake. You know, how did they, they chose me for this iconic role? Um, at any point, they're going to realize, and they're going to, you know, have me escorted out with security. Uh, but that never happened. Well, it did in like 2010. But um, uh, I got to voice Sonic, Shadow, Jet, um, and a slew of other video game characters, and. Uh, um, animation based starting with Sonic. Sonic started everything for me. Um, previous to that, I'd been working in, car, uh, in commercials. I was the voice of JetBlue for about three years. I said, JetBlue, it's not the only way to fly, but it should be. And uh, I did a bunch of Zit commercials for Zit Cream. I, we weren't selling Zits, we were trying to get rid of them. Um, and uh, yeah, and so for, for me, uh, Sonic sort of evolved because. When I started, it was it was sort of like this. It was a little more nerdy. It was more like Ryan Drummond's Sonic. Um, no, no disrespect. They did play a clip of Ryan Drummond to me when I auditioned originally, and said, "Sort of emulate this. Don't copy it." Uh, but by the time I was done with Sonic, he sounded like this, and that was all based on the producers and directors asking me to make him cooler because they wanted him to be a little less nerdy more cool uh so that was sort of my arc i don't remember if shadow sounded different from the beginning of when i started voicing shadow to the time uh that i was canned but um he was based on a roommate that I had named Carl. And Carl would always, he'd always want to talk about the book he was writing and he'd smoke cigarettes at eight in the morning. And Carl worked the third shift, so as soon as I was waking up, he was coming home. Hey, man. And uh, so I uh, based uh, uh, Shadow on him when they asked me to audition for Shadow. I immediately knew, I'm like, oh, he's, it, this is Carl. Uh, and then Jet... Uh, he sort of came after I was voicing uh, Usopp on One Piece. And Usopp was a little crazy like this. But then Jet, you know, just put a little bit of like grit into his voice and then you got Jet. And uh, that was based on, um, if anybody cares, uh, that was based on, I remember my friends and I and my former girlfriend at the time, ex-girlfriend, uh, we were... Uh, we had a Memorial Day spectacular and we were taking pictures. This is back when you had to get film developed. And so one of the pictures, I was sitting there, it was a picnic in the park and I was sort of like hunched over next to a, a like a brown paper bag like that. So I was like that. And my friend saw that and said, oh look, it's Eddie the Troll. And so we started giving Eddie the Troll a voice. And I know oh, maybe he sounds like this. I've got a bag, a brown paper bag. And then just as Faye would have it, um, Two weeks later, I went in and auditioned for Usopp, and immediately, again, uh, serendipitous, I knew exactly the, for, the, the voice I was going to use for him. Uh, as, as we never do, I, I didn't know if I was going to get the job or, or whatnot, but I was pl pleasantly surprised to find a couple weeks later that I, they'd cast me in that. And I love, I love when things come together like that, when you're having fun and you don't have to push for something and just and I call it divine inspiration just seeing the picture of Usopp and saying oh I know exactly the voice I'm going to use for that or seeing the picture of Shadow and saying that's Carl um, uh, funny story when I auditioned for Sonic X uh, I got a call back and they said we love the voice you're doing but I was also auditioning for Chris Thorndike at the same time who was the Chris in Sonic X and the producer Michelle asked me to swap those two voices. She said, can you do the voice you're doing for Chris for Sonic? So I don't know exactly what I was doing for Sonic that was different, but I switched them. I put the Chris voice for Sonic and then I thought, oh, of course, there's no way they're going to hire me. And then um, three weeks later, I was working in my agent's office and answering phones because my agent was out of town when four kids called to book me and they had no idea they were talking to me. 
so I, I answer the phone, Frontier Booking, and they say, yes, uh, Jason Griffith came in last week to audition for Sonic. And I went, oh, great. I get to hear the, the rejection <laughs> firsthand. And I was like, oh, yes, yes, uh, uh, I'm familiar. And uh, they said, oh, great, we'd like to hire him uh, next Wednesday for the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I just about fell out of my agent's chair, and I wanted to say, it's me! It's me! Um, but of course, I couldn't because the, you know, that would have freaked everyone out and they would never have understood. Um, and the funniest part is then I, my agent was in Florida at the time uh, checking in with me and I told him, John, I booked Sonic the Hedgehog. And his reaction was, Jay, no you didn't. <laughs> And I said, no, I swear, John, I booked Sonic that. Jay, stop lying. It took me getting one of the other agents on the phone to tell him, no, Jason really booked Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> um, so that was fun. Um, you know, my whole career has been filled with, I never knew that could happen. Over and over, to this day, there are... Even even coming out and doing these conventions, I never knew this was a thing that I could do or, or, or you know, that people would be interested in even seeing me. Um, the thing I forgot, because when I was voicing Sonic, it seemed like everybody wanted Ryan Drummond back. So I would get lots of hate mail, um, quasi-death threats. Um, like, give him, a, give him his job back! And I'm like, I'm just an actor. Like, all I did was audition for the part. Um, but I forgot that so many people that were five, six, seven years old when the show came out or the video games came out would grow up to be you. <laughs> so I, I forgot. Not, I didn't forget. I didn't even, never even realize. I figured you guys were still all eight years old. Um, <laughs> That this would be a you know a a, a thing like an actual thing and uh, so it's really cool but it's it's just been a whole ride of like I never knew this would happen I never thought this could happen and this is so cool that it is happening so um, yeah that's I mean that's the long and short of it I could talk for hours and hours ask my wife <laughs> she knows uh, but do you guys have any questions because I'd love to yes Noah I remember you man yeah, thank you okay. Oh, okay. I'll come back to you, man. I'll come. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, the only thing that kind of confused me about the Sonic X voice actors is that how come the guy, what's the name of the guy who voiced Dr. Robotnik? That's uh, Mike Pollock. How come Mike Pollock got the voice yeah. of Dr. Robotnik for 15 straight years, but everybody else was dropped? Let me call him real quick and ask. No, uh, <laughs> I don't think any of us know. So, the... Uh, unofficial official word was we were recording in New York City and they wanted to move the production out west and so this is back during when it wasn't so easy to do a patch where you could just record remotely so they just got a whole new team out on the west coast um, I don't know why Mike got to continue but maybe because nobody is better than Mike and you know nobody could beat him um, but I, you know it's like Spider-Man or just any, a lot of characters you can think of, man. I think it's cool that Sonic has an evolution and he does have different voice actors and different phases. So, you know, it never, well, it, it did bother me in the beginning to not be voicing him anymore. But now, you know, I just realized how much um, that opened up and started my whole career. So I'm totally cool with other people voicing Sonic aside from me. So um, I wish I knew the official story but they don't you know as actors we're sort of in the dark about all of it you know they just they call us when they, they need us we get the lines and then that's it you know it's not like i've never played one of the games i was uh, i voiced no it's a lie mario and sonic at the olympics i i voiced or i played <laughs> uh, i haven't played anything else though so but uh great question i wish i had a better answer for you yes Sonic and Mario at the Olympics game, which character did you play and then you win? <laughs> 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 Whew. Uh, that was a long time ago I played it. I played it when it first came out. Um, I must have played as Sonic and I probably did not win. My, my video gaming years were 1986 to 1994-ish. Um, and then I played so many video games I decided to stop playing video games. But I'm really good at Galaga. So just so you know. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up for Galaga. <laughs> yes, Noah. Hey, really, uh, one life, how did you 
get the voice of Jet the Hawk and what did you think of playing him? Um, I, I don't remember auditioning for him. I feel, and I could be completely wrong here, but many years have passed and I've had many children since, so my brain is fried. Um, I want to say they just asked me to do that voice and they said, do you have an idea for it? And as happens many times, you'll be in the booth and a director will say, let's try several things and then we'll decide on what we like and see what sticks. So you give them several different options and they say, oh, uh, voice number two. So that could have been for Jet. Um, but I had, you know, I had already known just like if I tweaked my Usopp voice a little bit and gave him more gravel, then, oh, that was, that was, the, yeah, that, and it felt right. That's, you know, you, you, you can always tell inside yourself if it feels right, you know, if it like kind of sits in the cut, as they say, um, and that's a great feeling. And that's, that's where I felt I got with Sonic by the time they fired me. Um, <laughs> Like, I felt like I really nailed it at this point. You know, I'm like, oh, I know. They should have fired you. They should have never fired you. They should have fired you. Let's start a uh, petition. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate you, man. Yes, ma'am. Um, for Shadow, you said you got inspired by your roommate, Carl. Yeah. So was it um, they gave you the description of Shadow's overall character, or you just saw a picture and you're like, he's edgy? I know exactly what Both. So I remember, I don't remember exactly what I was recording, but I was at Four Kids when an engineer, John Dixon, came in, and they must have been holding auditions, and I wasn't included in them. And so he came in with a little picture of Shadow and a little paragraph, probably just described who he was, what he, what he was, and said, do you want to audition for this? And I said, sure. And um, I, I want to say there was a callback after that, Although I can't, again, this is, it's so long ago, I can't, I can't be sure. Um, but uh, what was the question, though? Uh, if they gave you, like, a... Oh, yeah, so they get, yeah, they always give you, like, a little paragraph, which sometimes helps, sometimes it's more confusing. I, I always find it's better to just look at the picture and kind of get a voice from that. And at the time, I thought, lightning can't strike twice you know I, I thought there's no i'll audition for it but there's no way i'm gonna get this because i'm already sonic you know um but when i was cast i felt like of course of course this was meant to happen um so uh yeah you know as as happens in all auditions you get a little little character bio a little picture and then the name of the game is nobody knows what they want until they hear it you know including me you know, including the actors. Um, any, anyone else? Yes, sir. My question relates to the origin story that you brought up about the voice that you were recording for Sonic at the first time. Yeah. They gave you an audio clip and they said, we want something similar yeah. but distinct. Are you sure that it wasn't Jaleel White that you were given? Are you familiar with him? He voiced... <sighs> I am very familiar with... I am... When I listened to the first episode of Sonic... <clears throat> Instead of sounding like a teen, he sounds more like he's twelve. He's like the stars in the sky look the same. And I swear I hear Jaleel White. Sure, so that that's I was a. Wondering, do you are you absolutely certain it was Ryan Drummond? You're the, the YouTube video for the interview. Yeah. He was like, oh yeah, here's a picture of the last voice actor. I'm like, no, but I swear it sounds like Jaleel. Interesting, interesting. Uh, you're the very first person to bring that up, and now I'm questioning my entire history. Um, <laughs> Because it could have been, but I want to say they said this was the current voice or I heard his name mentioned when they played the clip. And again, it was uh, an instance where they didn't want me to copy it. They just wanted something in the ballpark of, which I think they kind of threw that all out with Roger because Roger's more of his own voice. I feel like, and I always say I'm, I was the last cartoony sounding Sonic. Um Because I wasn't like, hey kids, you know, I was like, hey, this is, this is me right here. Um, but I... I don't know. I think that's that. That's a question left to the ages. Now, it's been so long since I couldn't even ask anybody who would remember. I'm sure. I will ask someone. I'll get back to you on that, <laughs> sir. Okay. So, did you ever get to meet Junichi Kamiwara, the Japanese voice actor for Sonic? No. No. The only only other Sonic I've ever met is Ryan Drummond, and we will duke it out later today for. <laughs> For supremacy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sir? Uh, you did voice work for Sonic the Werehog, correct? Yes. Uh, do you remember how you came up with that voice? Yeah. 
Right. So, yeah, this this would have been a great example of let's just hear what you got and then we'll tweak it from there. Um, I feel like the Werehog, as soon as I had, like, as soon as I tried something, they liked it. I, I do remember that, which was the easiest part of recording that game because as we went on, I, I, I thought I had strep throat recording that game because my uh, vocal cords felt like they were just closing up on me and I was sick. Um, so that especially if you've heard the, the screams, the Werehog screams for that game. Man, um, I tasted blood on every take. <laughs> and the thing is, here's the two things with recording games is when, when the team is in from Japan, you do it then. You don't do it, oh, I'll do it next week when I feel better. It's like, nope, you're booked now and they're here, so you do it now. Um, and the other thing is they wanted a a five second scream, an eight second scream, a 10 second scream, a 12 second scream. And I don't know if this was is so primitive that they just couldn't cut it off. Like, um, but I remember, I think we did three or four screams when the director, Chris Collet, turned to the team and said, all right, that's enough. And you can see he's suffering in there. Um, but I also feel like being sick helped me tremendously with that game because I didn't want to sound sick and you know I I think I'd gotten enough hate mail at this point where I'm like this god this, I got to do great I want people to love me and I think that's where the werehog came from I'm like I could do this um so uh yeah so it was that that was a hard game to to record but um I I think it was my favorite experience because of how it came out and it seems to be you know a at least from everybody I've met, that seems to be the number one favorite game that people bring up to me, you know. I still can't believe when people are like, oh, I love Sonic 06. I'm like, where were you in 06? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else? Uh, anyone who's, who didn't have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, what was the most, uh, what's your favorite Sonic project you ever worked on? Sonic Unleashed. Okay. Yeah, for sure. That, yeah, just because, you know, Aside from really having to push myself, and I felt like I got, like I felt like I really landed on on Sonic's voice at that point, and it had come full circle from, or not full circle, but the, the whole arc. Because I don't know if you hear in the beginning when I was mentioning, like you know, in the beginning Sonic was like a little more nasal and a little more nerdy, but by the time we were doing Unleashed, he was like this, you know. So I felt like the, the producer producers had really pushed me in the right direction to to be cooler, and I don't know, something just took hold when I. You know, when I finally got that voice in my body, which is, I became him. Yes, exactly. That's that's how. That's a great way to put it because it feels like you can do no wrong once you get that feeling in, and everyone is on the same page as you, saying, "Oh, that's the voice. That's the that's the mannerism. That's the coolness." It's like, man, you could just put me in front of the phone book, and I'll you know read it and have the same effect, sir. Uh -huh. For, for the video games? Yeah. Um, so we're, if there's any any video, well, this is, again, this is back in 2007, 8. I don't know if it's different now. I mean, I've um, probably not. Everything's prelay for video games. Um, I just did the most recent Call of Duty game, and that was all prelay. Um, and then they would, if they had video, it's always sort of a rough, like, it, like it'll be like stop animation almost like claymation at points and then all of a sudden it'll be like sketches on a piece of paper just like ah, ah um so that's always in its rudimentary form if there's any sort of video involved with uh with recording but for the most part the difference between the video games and the tv show for the video games everything's prelay they just have the script give us three versions of each each line each react, give us a bunch of reacts, and then later on, they'll drop them in, and if there's pickups, then you get to see, like, the next session, you get to kind of see it, it, it being put together. Um, now, for the TV show, obviously, it was in Japan first, so we were recording to the picture um, for Sonic X, and, you know, we're usually watching, I can't remember if we watched the scenes in Japanese, I want to say we did. Uh, I can't be sure though, but yeah, we for for Sonic X that was all two picture. Yes. Yes, I'm not trying to be a question hog, everybody, but believe it or not, did you know that Sonic X season three it wasn't even supposed to exist? The only reason. 
reason season three, the Mega Rex arc even exists is because the show was so popular in America, Four Kings Entertainment had to call Japan quick and ask them for more episodes. So uh, the, the third season is an American exclusive. It came out in Japan 13 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Mind blown. I had no idea. <laughs> I love that though, man. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, I just want to, uh, on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you so much for coming out to Sacramento. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my first time to Sacramento, by the way. I was, as I was land, as the plane was landing yesterday, I was playing the full house theme in my head and I went, oh, no, wait, wrong city, wrong city. But close. <laughs> I do have a question. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, were you like at all uh, familiar with Sonic before you started recording? Oh, gosh, yes. So the funny thing is, growing up, I always had a Nintendo. So Mario was my thing. My sister was always jealous. She wanted to play, you know, and I was like, no, 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 no. You stay away from my Nintendo. And then in 1993, she got a Genesis. So she had Sonic. And she's playing Sonic, but then I one upped her and became Sonic, you know? So it's been like this sibling rivalry for all this time. Um, but uh, I remember playing, my cousin and I would play video games all the time. My cousin and I actually moved to New York and became actors together. Um, so we have a long history, but um, it, we, he had a Sega CD, and so we played a lot of Sonic CD, um, among other great, oh, great nostalgic games that, you know, and it's so funny, it's so great to have those experiences, because when I started recording, when I was doing, say, Shadow the Hedgehog, the video game, I was 22, might have been, might have been 23, um, I could remember all those times sitting on my cousin's like bedroom floor playing these games with him and I just the entire time I was recording those games I thought there's a 12 year old out there who's going to be hearing my voice come through their television and they're going to feel the same way that I felt so I always try to keep that in mind when I was recording and kind of keep that magic alive as opposed to oh this is just a job or I just want to do good I'm like no I get to do this magical thing that I didn't even think was possible for me to be able to do when I was 12, 13 years old, you know? And all of a sudden, here I am in the booth, and I get to be Shadow, I get to be Sonic, and it's just, it's like a huge responsibility, but it's also like a huge responsibility to have fun and keep that spark of just that magic alive, you know? And and I think that it's far too often is overlooked in this profession. People just career focused and driven and everything. And I just always, you know, found myself so grateful and, and lucky to be able to do what I do. And I never take it for granted, you know, never. Yes, ma'am. Did you always know that you wanted to be a voice actor? And if so, what exactly led, led you to be the voice of a character? So, no, um, I sort of fell into voiceover. I feel like I have to stand on here to be seen. Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Uh, no, I feel like I uh, I never wanted to be a voice actor per se. I never knew that it was even a career option. Um, but funny enough, when I was, from the time I was five to the time I was 13, I asked for a video camera every Christmas, every birthday. If I had a list, it was like number one through eight was video camera, then a bunch of video games, and then like 25, 26 would be video camera again. But I never got it because we were we were poor growing up. And, uh, you know, and, and video cameras back in the 80s and early 90s were like a billion dollars. So instead, what I would get is a voice recorder every year with a microphone that sort of looked like this. And so... All that creativity I wanted to pour into that video camera, I had to you, I had to channel it into the the voice recordings, and I, again, like going back to what I was saying about having fun and and the, the nostalgic factor and whatnot. I feel like just having that that sort of like training ground was invaluable to becoming a voiceover actor. So quickly, I when I first started acting, I was um, just going out for TV commercials. Um, on camera, film, TV, all that stuff, never voiceover. And then I had a an answering machine, so this really dates me, <laughs> with a little cassette tape, and I did an outgoing message on my answering machine that said, you've reached the Jason Griffith Show. You know, my guests include you. Leave your message after the beep, you know. <laughs> and so my agent was calling me to uh, for, for an on-camera audition. He heard that, and at the same time, serendipitous, 
Never knew this could happen. Um, they were casting a BMW or a Lexus commercial for a radio, and they needed a cheesy game show host sound. So he went, huh, maybe I'll send Jason on this. So he did, and I booked it, hence my very first voiceover booking. And like agents do, they'll continue, when they see where you hit, they'll continue sending you on those kind of projects. So I started booking more and more voiceover. So again, this it was my whole career is like, I never knew I was gonna be a voice actor. I thought I was gonna be on, you know, Fuller House. <laughs> I know, and then here I am in Sacramento going, whatever happened to you, where's the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> uh, someone who didn't have a question first? Yes, sir. Um, when you guys were doing the voiceover work for the video games, um, did you guys like voice all the lines together, or did you guys do it separately? For different projects, we would go together. Uh, when I was working on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, we would be, you're familiar? <laughs> Uh, it's underground, I know. Very. Uh, <laughs> it would be. It would be all the turtles, uh, except for Sam Regal, who was on the other coast, in a room together with me when I was Usagi. Um, for Sonic, though, we never recorded together. That was always separate, and 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 they were. They were very merciful in the sense that they didn't have me do Sonic and Shadow at the same time. They would ask, who do you want to do first? Uh, Although I can do it really well. No, you can't. Yes, I can. I've been doing it for years. I've been doing it for years as well. I've been doing it longer than you. So I can do it now, but back then, I think that would have blown my head apart. Any uh, fun interactions with Mike Pollock? Every day. Mike's awesome. We were just in Trenton, New Jersey last weekend together, and he's, he, have you guys met Mike Pollock yet? Okay, so you know he wears the shiniest shirts. Oh, he's, he's awesome, but he's such a cool guy, and um, I just, I have so much fun with Mike. He's, he, because he always wants to joke around, and he's, he's just, he's an awesome guy, so, um, but as far as, like, fun interactions, I don't know. No, Never. That, that, no, usually no. <laughs> like, we're not just doing voices. Because, you know, because we do so much, like, uh, my entire day is filled with doing voiceovers, and his is too. So when we are together, we're just normal people trying to make each other laugh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yes. So I have a question, and I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Um, so is it easy to record voices for video games? versus TV shows, or is it the other way around? For me, it's equal. Um, uh, What what gets complicated is when, um, not complicated, but when when there's a lot of like, all right, we want five different deaths from you for a video game. Like when I was doing Call of Duty, it's like, you know, like a bullet. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So it goes from like everything like, (laughs) to like, ah! <laughs> you know <laughs> but I you know um, aside from just having to work long hours it's 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 the best job in the world I mean I have nothing to complain about even when I'm tired at the end and I can't speak I'm like bring it I like give me more like I'm ready for it um, trying to think if there's anything recently that uh, you know the the hardest thing to do as a voiceover actor in my opinion is books on tape that's uh, audiobooks because you're in a booth for hours just listening to yourself read and then you'll get into a patch where you just keep messing up every sentence just a little like uh, and it, it for me it I feel like I'm going crazy at at a certain point of doing books on tape that's the that's the hardest thing everything else is like it's like fun time you know it's like just playing you know anybody didn't have a question I don't think you had one sir uh, yeah uh, so when realizing you got called off for not being Sonic anymore. Okay. Um, how did you feel when you realized like your last session recording for a game was that was your last one? I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know until after I was done recording everything. Um, I, I don't remember when I heard that there was a new Sonic. Uh, my heart was broken. Uh, but I didn't find out until like everyone else in the world find found out. You know. Um, but recording Sonic Unleashed and I want to say Unleashed was the last game we recorded like two games at once I think it was Unleashed and uh, Secret Rings or Black Knight at the same time and but um, Black Knight was called something else the, um, I think they were going to call it Sonic and the Knights of the Round Table or something 
I know. And so when Black Knight came out, I didn't even realize. I was like, I don't think I'm in that game. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in this round table game, though. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I didn't know, you know, because it's better to be ignorant about those sort of things and just do what you do as opposed to thinking, like, is there anything I can do to make them, like, like me again, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I just blissfully, blissfully ignorant, you know, about that. Sir. So, first of all, thank you very much for coming. Wow, thank you. Of course, of course. Um, I'm a big Sonic fan, and I know you're going to get a lot of like Sonic questions today, but my question is, um, you've been also part of the Pokemon franchise. Yeah. I want to know, what was it like to voice Silent? So, um, Silent, when they show, again, when I auditioned for him, I got to see a little picture of Silent, a little, little blurb uh, about him. Oh, see you, Noah. Thank you for coming, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Love you, dude. Um... So, uh, Son uh, Silent was so close to Sonic, because Sonic was up here, but then Silent has to be a little more like Flowey. So, this is sort of the, what I was doing the whole time I was recording. It's evaluation time. You know, it has to be bright and everything, but it can't get up here. Do you know what I mean? So, it's just like a little notch on the focus dial, on the focus wheel. Um, but as a voice actor, I mean, that's that's all you're kind of channeling all day long. It's like, how do I... And then your director's like, no, you're, you're a little too this way. You got to go a little more this way. Um, it was great. I mean, it was great voicing him. I Again, that was another project where I was like, I don't think I'm going to get this because I sound too much like Sonic. So when I got the call, it was like, ah, oh, amazing. Because I was... I forget which season. I was supposed to be the lead on... I don't even know if I could talk about this. I was the, supposed to be lead on a very popular show. I got the part. Very popular. Hey, four kids, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> and then at the last minute, someone said, he sounds too much like Sonic. Oh, oh. Was it chaotic? No, I was in chaotic. I was the lead in chaotic. Yeah. I don't know if I can say. If you come to my booth, I'll say, you know, <laughs> off the record. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with a combo, you'll get the information. Have <laughs> you already paid for the combo? That's right. Oh, well, then come on back. <laughs> Sir. So from 2003 to 2010, especially with the four kids, it seemed like you were in everything. So you were like yes. at Kiss Roads in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Uh, Miyamoto, Usagi, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You were even the monkey mascot in Danimals. Yes. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like after 2010 for me, it kind of seems like you fell off the face of the earth. So I was wondering, what has Jason Griffith been up to oh. the last 13 years besides Call of Duty? Oh. Um, so, uh, a lot, uh, honestly. Um, I do, I'm the voice of Navy Federal Credit Union right now. I say, Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Um, I also do a lot of uh, ADR looping stuff where we're filling in uh, voices and sounds and whatnot for TV shows, films, um, you know, working at Warner Brothers, uh, Paramount, Sony, Disney, like all the time. Uh, in addition, one of the coolest gigs that I get to do all the time now is dubbing foreign TV shows and films from like Italian, Spanish, French into English for Netflix, Hulu, um, Disney Plus. Um, I've got quite a few out where I'm like the lead character, it, just my voice coming out of like uh, this Frenchman. Um, and it's it's such a cool thing because, you know, my whole career for like, you know, 15 years was like, blah, blah, you know, like Sean Schimmel and I used to do all the incidentals for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where it's like Goon 3, you know, this guy getting, a, you know, thrown off a garbage truck. Um, because they knew we would just like rip our voices apart. Sean and I would do uh, would do that. Um, but this new gig where I get to, it's almost like acting, you know, because you're watching an actual live action television show and and then you're putting your voice in there. And it's like, it's normal talking. <laughs> so I really like that, you know, because I've gotten to experience the full spectrum, you know, in that sense. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, um, you remember that one episode of Teenage Nope. None. It was the one episode where they had to take down this one thug named Janko. You know the black kid. Oh, Janko. No, I have, I'm sorry, dude. I I wish I did. I I don't. Yeah. Why did? 
How come they couldn't get a real black actor to voice Janko, but Sean Shamel voiced a black kid, but his impersonation was really bad? I'm going to give you Sean's number. You should call and ask him. I don't know, man. I don't know. He didn't put no real emphasis in the sound of black. He just sound like a white kid trying to pretend he's from the ghetto, but he sucked. I'm going to bring this up with Sean, dude. What's your name? Because I'm going to say... I'm going to say, Jameson asked me, why didn't you have any soul in this freaking part? I don't know, man. That was back in the, that was back in the aughts, man. I don't, I wish I knew. All I was doing was screaming. <laughs> Sir. Uh, when you were first doing the script for Sean and that song, you were like, Sean Swerver, like, what, what was the reaction? Oh, I get to swear. Awesome. <laughs> um, Not here. <laughs> um. It was, it, I mean, look, everything, everything about that recording process was just a dream come true for me. So to be able to swear as well, and I'm like, and people are like, kids are going to be playing this and I'm going to hear swear words? F yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's the funny thing. When we were recording it, they didn't know what the rating was going to be yet. So <laughs> somewhere on a dat tape out there is me as Shadow saying a lot worse than what made it into the game. They did the... Uh, they, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I could do it all for you right now. Um, so, so we did the uh, what what they like to call the just in case recordings. Let's get that just in case. Let's let's have you say this just in case. I even think I swore as Sonic, but it just didn't make it into the game. But when they're when they're recording, they just want to get everything possible so they don't have to pay you to come back when they're like, oh, why didn't we get this? We need that, you know. It, from, from my very vague recollection at this point, I, I remember the, there being a lot in the, in the recording that just didn't make it into the game because, again, they didn't know what the, the rating was, and once they had that, they had to edit out other stuff, you know. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, I, uh, is, uh, five more minutes, is that no? Okay, great. Uh, anybody else, uh, burning questions? Yes, sir. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan, I'm sorry I haven't been asking all your names. I want to say something, but I'm not going to take it from these people unless they don't want to talk. More than welcome, man. Okay, um, and you remember the F Zero animated series that used to come? Yeah, out? yeah. Okay, I was in that. Was yeah. You the one who voiced the assassin hitman Pico? That sounds very familiar, and I haven't thought about that in 20 years. So you could be right. Um, I think so. I think so. He sounds like Shadow because don't you remember when they had this <laughs> his gun in the American version? No. It was a distant sniper that carried iron piercers, but when they brought it to America, they made the gun look more like a toy. Dude, if the internet ever goes down, I'm going to come to your house because I'm like, J Jameson has the info here. <laughs> I don't. So again, when I'm, re when I'm recording this stuff, man, it's like 30 minutes in, out, done, and I'm going to get a falafel and I've completely forgotten everything I've done. So like little like details like that don't stick with me unless... It's about something I recorded last week, just because there's so much going on. Plus, I have three kids, so my mind is is like a, on a, in a frying pan. Yes. So um, you said you have like three kids. When you were doing the like the, your first Sonic voice, and your first Shadow voice, um, would they ever tell like? Do you know if they would ever tell? Just like, oh, my dad's Sonic. Well, no, no. I have a six-year-old, a two-year-old, and a one-year-old. And if they did that, I'd be like, all right, well, you're Mensa. <laughs> uh, no, they, they don't. My my six-year-old sort of knows what I do for a living because I have a studio at home. So every once in a while, he'll say, I'm going to work. I'm going. I'm like, what are you doing for work? He's like, auditions. <laughs> I think it's the cutest thing. Um, but, you know, I, I think I only recently did my sonic voice for my, uh, for my oldest son. And, and, like, he laughed. But one of my favorite, <laughs> my, one of my favorite stories is um, I did a show called, uh, oh, what was it called? Robo Carpoli. And I played, uh, it's for preschoolers. And I played a fire truck, Roy. And Roy was a little like, oh, yeah, we're going to put out a fire. This is great. Um, and so I said to my son, I'm like, oh, do you want to watch? You want to watch a show that daddy's in? He said, mm-hmm, I want to watch. And so I, I start playing it for him in like five minutes. And he goes, want to not watch? <laughs> <laughs> so we put on Paw Patrol and, you know, the rest is history. 
<laughs> I think we have time for one more, one or two more. Uh, I see you waving, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll always respond to a good beard. You know what I mean? I do. I mean, I've, I've no, like, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, just, that's... That was it? Well, I watched the work, seen her music, I watched the other thing that she done recently. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she's very talented. Yeah, I talked with her before, too. Like, I just, I was up there with Brian, and he, so I actually asked that, too. Yeah, no, he, yeah, Emmy's great, and she's, you know, she's really doing, she's working really hard to, to build herself up, you know. So I'm surprised to see you both, like, back in the same, like, in the same room, kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was unexpected, like, oh, here's Shadow for this version, and then here, oh, here's mine. Yeah. By the way, do uh, real quick, do we have any aspiring voice actors? Are you guys aspiring to be voice actors, or? That's great. Um, you're like quasi, let's see, let's see. I told I can't voice actors to save my life, but I think my you have a great voice, dude. Thanks. Don't ever let it. Oh my gosh! Don't ever let anybody tell you. I remember when I was 14 years old, and I was like little, you know, fat nerd boy, and um, I just remember someone at one point looking at me, and I was laughing. He was telling me a joke. as an older guy, and he looks at me and he goes, "I don't like your smile." <laughs> and so for the next five years, I was like, mm, "I'm just going to be really mad looking." You should you should see my like senior portrait. Um, <laughs> But, dude, you can never listen to anybody, anybody about anything. Even if you think it's a voice of authority, even if I said, no, you have no uh, uh, no business voice acting, don't listen to me, dude. If you want to do it, you you can absolutely do it, but you have to work at it. And as a voice actor, 99% of your job is, here's the copy right now, go. It's not, oh, take it home, look it over, come up with some ideas. It's like, even when we're doing these auditions, man, it's like, we're going to do five auditions. Um, maybe if you're in the waiting room and you're lucky, you get to uh, leaf through them. But I've gone into the studio before where you don't see anything until you're recording it. So my biggest advice to you is just read out loud all the time, everything you can. If you see s billboards, just say them out loud as soon as you see them. Because as a voice actor, it's always going to be... Or, or they're going to want to change something on you at the last minute and you have to know how to adapt to that. That's the biggest thing. And also, three in a row. Casting director is always going to ask for three in a row. So if you can if you can exercise that muscle that you make them different every time. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, new maple brown sugar flavored instant Quaker oatmeal. It almost takes longer to say than it does to make. Hey, dude. New maple brown sugar flavored instant Quaker oatmeal. It almost takes longer to say than it does to make. <laughs> Hey, did you know this? New maple brown sugar flavored instant Quaker oatmeal almost takes longer to say than it does to make. So always have in the back pocket three different versions that you could pull out at any time without even thinking about it. Don't overthink. As soon as you start overthinking, they, get, they go to the next guy. So as soon as, the faster you can work, you will be a casting director's wet dream. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, one more question? Okay, one more question. Who? Yes, sir, I haven't heard from you. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Um, for Amazon, there's a there's a, a French series, love it, called Alphonse. A L P H O N S E. I voice Alphonse in the English dub of that. Um, what's the most recent? I did another one for I think it's Amazon called Everybody Loves Diamonds. I'm the lead in that. Um, and we just started on a couple that I can't talk about right now, but there's the list goes on. I've done I've done so many like just random Turkish shows. <laughs> Say again. Is it gonna be part of the food package? Say again. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, no, I can't even mention it then. <laughs> uh, I think is that is that our time? Okay, well, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for. I really appreciate you coming out and listening to me ramble. Thank you guys. Um, give me a second. I can actually check tomorrow. Actually, he probably is. I think he is. Let me check.